And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time cookies. Description, who doesn't love cookies? Try to figure out the best one. And then we have a link. Oops. <laughs> and we're back with another Pico CTF challenge. This time we're looking at cookies. And this is a web exploitation Description, who doesn't love cookies? Try to figure out the best one. And then we have a link. And when we click through, we can see, welcome to my cookie search page. See how much I like different cookies. And it looks like we can type something in here and it's prompting us with snickerdoodle. So I'll go ahead and I'll put that in. And it says, that is a cookie, not very special though. I love snickerdoodle cookies. So let's bring up the uh, development tools. And since we already had the hint that this is most likely related to HTTP cookies, let's go ahead and let's look right at those to start. So under application, we have cookies and they're displayed here. And we can see we have a cookie for this website. And let's briefly talk about what cookies are. So cookies explained. They're a way to have users store information about what they're doing and present it back to the website. So as an example, we have a user Bob on the left here and he sends a request to Amazon saying, I'd like to log in, and let's pretend he put his login information as well. And Amazon responds and says, hi, Bob, hold this, please. And they give him a login token, and then they give him contents of his shopping cart. So one tennis racket, one can of tennis balls. And Bob holds those, and he sees those in his browser. And then he asks, Amazon, can you show me DVDs? And he presents back all this information, which are actually cookies, to Amazon. And because Amazon recognizes his login token, it says, oh, this is Bob. I know who Bob is. He's already logged in. And then it already knows what, it knows what his running list of uh, items is as well. So it's a nice way of holding things. So as a real world analogy, imagine you have a deli. So if you go into any supermarket, they normally have a deli and you can get things at the deli. You can get custom orders and they will weigh everything out for you. And then they'll give you a sticker that says it weighed this much. It had this, these ingredients in it, but you don't pay there. You actually pay later, typically, you go to the front. So what are some of the problems that could occur with this system where you're holding this ticket and then someone later at the cashier desk is gonna act on it? Well, what if you change the ticket? For example, you remove ingredients, then you pay less. Maybe you say, instead of five pounds of meat, this is three pounds of meat. Or what about a negative price or a negative amount of pounds? It's negative five pounds, you pay me. Well. If you have a cashier who's a normal human being, they'll say, no, that doesn't make sense. But if you have somebody who's super checked out and not paying attention, like this woman in this picture, or a computer, which is actually very stupid and will do whatever you tell it to, you have to be careful. Because if you give, uh, if you trust a piece of information that's held by users, and then the user abuses that piece of information, the computer will treat it like it's legitimate. And things have happened like this before, where people end up putting a, a negative number in, and then they get paid to take inventory. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about cookies, let's look at this one. So we can see the cookie's name is name and it has a value of zero. So let's try, let's look at types of cookies because I don't know that many kinds. So sugar cookies, biscotti, let's see what happens when we search on these. So it says, I love sugar cookies and we can see the value changed to seven. Okay. And when we clicked back to the main page to search, it went to negative one. Let's try biscotti. And we can see biscotti is 10. Okay, let's try just a garbage value, something that's definitely not. Let's, let's try football. There's no football cookie, what's gonna happen? We get a negative one again. So it seems like this cookie value of uh, name, the, the value of name affects what cookie we have or, or changes when the cookie changes. So let's try setting the value to something like two and let's refresh the page. Oatmeal raisin. Okay, so it seems like we can control what kind of cookie we're presented with based on this value. Ginger snaps, great. So we could go through this manually, but that doesn't seem like a very appealing thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open Burp Suite and we're gonna automate this and we are going to put in different values for that cookie value and we're gonna see what the results we get are. So I'm gonna copy this page, and then I'm going to use the proxy. And what this is gonna do is it's going to capture the traffic that we present. 
So here you can see the intercept is on. So it says you're sending this request out and we're gonna allow it to continue. And we can see here we're presented with uh, the search page. So let's do a search and then let's look at our history. And we can see right here, this is what I was talking about where with each request, we present the cookie and the cookie has a key value pair of name and seven in this case. So this is Bob's tennis racket, for example, uh, based off of my slides. So what we'd like to do is we would like to send different values. And uh, so we will send this to intruder and you can see that intruder lit up. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna identify and it already did fields where we can put in values that might be uh, taken by the server and treated as, as being meaningful. So you can see it's already found that name is interesting. So it's going to replace name and here we decide on the payloads. And for the payload type, I'm gonna say we want numbers and we want them to be sequential and we'll go from negative one up to 30 in steps of one using decimal. This looks good. And we're gonna start the attack and that sounds very dramatic. This is just telling us that because we didn't pay for it, it's a little slower, that's okay. That sounds very dramatic, but all it's doing is it's just sending requests to the server and it's observing the output. So what we see here is we see for request one, it used a payload of negative one and it got this HTTP status code and it had a length of 557 bytes. So the next one had a payload of zero, so meaning name equals zero. And we're just working through and we can see most of these are the same. They're about 1930, something like that. But there are a couple that stand out as different. And one of them is this guy, 1265 and 557. So let's look at this guy first. So we can see we sent negative one and our response was this, it's redirecting. Okay, so that doesn't seem like it's giving us the flag. Let's look at a normal response. So we sent three and it's a little harder to look at here without uh, the browser, I'll admit. But it says, this is a cookie, not very special though. I love ginger snap cookies, okay. So now let's look at that one that was weird and was 1295 or 1265. So that was sending 18. And we can see over here, we have a flag. So let's submit that flag and see if it works. Oops, I'm not logged in because I cleared my cookies. Okay, so I wasn't logged in originally and I had to log in. So that's, that's a very good thing because it demonstrates something important, which is your login information is stored as cookies. So when you clear your cookies, you lose your logins. So let's quickly look at that because I think it'll be interesting for you guys. So I have a cookie right now for Pico CTF and you can see I have a session ID and a cross-side request forgery token. And it's very hard to tell exactly what this is. Uh, they may be storing some information, but more likely this is just a, a random number that says, hey, this is Mike. And only Mike knows this number. So if I'm ever given this number, I know it's Mike. Hopefully this was all helpful to you. If it was, you can help me out by liking, subscribing, or commenting. Thanks, bye.